Monsters, this is Mrs. Vandalay bringing you another edition of The Blank Wall. Today we're going to be doing 14.6, so we continue along the equilibrium notes, and this section is dealing with the uh, calculation of the uh, equilibrium constant if I give you the equilibrium concentrations. So we've learned about how to write the law of mass action, and that is where you put your products over your reactants. Don't forget your coefficients represent the power that you raise each term to and um, then all we're going to do today is plug in those values and solve for that K and what does that K actually mean so in this first problem we have if equilibrium concentrations are given so the reaction is set to go we let it go till the forward reaction equals the reverse reaction and this is the concentrations that we end up with and that's really important I'll say it again these are the concentrations we end up with at equilibrium now do me a favor real quick this term right here should read I2 not H2. I have it written twice as a typo. So if you just want to change this to I2, that'd be great. So how do we do this? Well, always write down your, your equation, your law of mass action. And I would do that here. Now we're given molarities, so I have it written as molarities as a Kc. Uh, as you know, there is something called a Kp. If I were giving you the pressures, I would use that instead. But we are given the molarities, so we'll use this. So notice I have the HI squared because of the 2 in front, and then I have the concentrations of H2 and I2. So now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. So HI is 0 0.78, H2 is 0 0.11, and I2 is 0 0.11. So plug in those numbers. I'll give you a second. Go ahead and type away on your calculator and figure out what the answer is. So that's what I got, two sig figs, 50. Now think about this for a minute. Are there units? Well, technically um, there could be units, but in these you don't worry about them. Unlike the kinetics chapter where we always are asking what is the K units or what is the value with the units, we will not ask you what is the units for an equilibrium concentration or the equilibrium constant, excuse me. So 50 would be great. Uh, that's all you need to do. So let's see what else we need to do. So it says here the equilibrium concentration, the reactants and products uh, depend on this initial concentration. Let me say it again. These values right here, these values depend on your initial concentrations. The equilibrium constant does not, but the uh, actual concentrations do depend on what you start with. Uh, something else to note, uh, the equilibrium constants do not change. That's why they call them constants, all right? So as long as you're at the a given temperature, your, your temperature does not change, your equilibrium constants do not change. We're going to find out at the end of this chapter, chapter uh, section 14.9, what happens when the temperature changes. But for right now, we're good. So let's look at problem number 15. So I have uh, two experiments involving the exact same products and reactants uh, at the exact same temperature. It looks like 600 degrees Celsius, pretty hot. And we are going to react sulfur dioxide and oxygen to form gaseous sulfur trioxide. Why is it important to know the state of matter? If you remember, liquids and solids do not get put in the law of mass action, okay? So we're asked to find the equilibrium constant uh, for both cases. Well, here is my experiment number one, where I have initial and equilibrium, and experiment number two, where I have initial and equilibrium. Notice that these two values aren't the same. Notice that my initials are not the same. So what this problem is going to prove to you that it doesn't make any difference what our initial concentrations are. We should get the exact same equilibrium constant at the end if I have the same um, uh, products and reactants. Okay, so what do I do first? Well, uh, write down your balanced equation. That is so important, as you know, so that we know how to write the law of mass action from that. So take a minute out and write down your balanced equation. Okay, did you get this? This is what I got. Um, so now I have the balanced equation. I can write my law of mass action. Why don't you do that? Okay. 
Okay, so hopefully, oops, where to go? Here it is. Hopefully you got this as a value. And now it's a matter of plugging in. Remember, we use the equilibrium concentrations in here, not your initial, your equilibrium. So SO3 is 3.5 and go from there. So here are my values and take a second out and start plugging in those numbers. Uh, hopefully you got this. Now, will you pause this and do the exact same thing for experiment number two and see what you get? So go ahead and pause this. All right, how did you do? Well, I plugged in these values, which I again get 4.32. I hope you agree that they are pretty close. So even though they're what four hundredths off, that hopefully you agree that no matter what kind of initial uh, concentrations you start with, you're going to get the same equilibrium constant. Okay. So I want to set up a BCA table, our old friend BCA, and make sure this makes sense to you. Okay. So I wrote down the equations twice because I'm going to use experiment number one and experiment number two again. And I want to set up the BCA. Now think about the B as beginning, which is your initial. The C is what we need to look for. And think of the A as equilibrium. Now I know that the BCA table has moles. So if I assume there is one liter of solution, then my molarities would be moles. So let's just take care of that. So I'm going to be plugging in. These are my B's. These are my A's. Okay, so let's see what I get when I do that. So I'm going to start off with my B. Here is my initial set. My C, which I don't know about yet. And hang, let me scroll down a little bit. And here is my A. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Well, if you notice that I start out with two uh, moles or the molarity, if you will, and I end up with uh, 1.5, how much did this go down by? It went down by 0.5. And same thing here, I subtracted 0.25 and I added 0.5. Notice again, it's the change we need to look at. What is 0.5 divided by 2 times 1? Isn't that 0.25? What is 0.5 divided by 2 times 2? That's 0.5 again. So what we're doing in the ice table, or what's coming up as the ice table, is the same exact procedure as the BCA table. So why don't you take a few minutes out, pause this, and fill in the BCA table for the second one. All right, welcome back. So hopefully you figured out the BCA table again. Uh, this is going to look a little bit different. Here's my beginning. I need to think about what my change will look like. And then here is my equilibrium concentrations. What's different about this experiment number two? Well, you start off with zero moles of oxygen. Uh, what does that mean? Can you proceed to the right? Can you make more products if you do not have any reactants? The answer is no, you can't. So what's going to happen here first is that the sulfur trioxide will decompose into sulfur dioxide and oxygen. You have to make some oxygen for then the forward reaction to start. So we need to get rid of some SO3. So 0.35 minus 0.9, uh, excuse me, 0.09 will give you the 0.26. So notice 0.09 divided by 2 times 1 is 0.045, and then this is again um, 0.09. So these numbers work out, don't they, where we are adding uh, to our reactants and subtracting from our products. But what is the end result? Well, our end result, we've already figured out. The end result is that my equilibrium constant is constant. Okay. So I want to do one more thing. I want to show you a little bit of foreshadowing of what's to come in the next section. I'm going to introduce to you here something called Q. Q stands for reaction quotient. That's clever, isn't it? And the quotient is a lot like the law of mass action, but instead of putting in the equilibrium values, let's put in the beginning values. And that will tell us how this reaction proceeds. So Q, again, is products of reactants. So if I were to set up my law of mass action, I put my products of my reactants and square whatever I need to. And this time Q uses the beginning. 
So I'm going to plug in my beginning value, so 3 squared over 2 squared times 1.5, and if you do the math, you get 1.5. All right, what does this tell me? Look at this value, 1.5, and compare it to 4.36. This is what it needs to get to, 4.36. I am at 1.5. I need to make this ratio, products of reactants, bigger to make 4.36. So that means my numerator needs to get bigger, my denominator needs to get smaller. What does that mean? I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to proceed to the right. I'm going to make more products. So what we find out is if Q is less than K, our beginning value is less than my equilibrium constant, it shifts, oops, shifts to the right to make more products. So what if I do the same thing over here? So what if I find Q? Watch what happens. Remember, we're going to use our beginning amount. So we're going to take the 3.35 squared divided by 0.5 squared divided by 0. Folks, what is any number divided by 0? It's not 0. If you remember it's infinity, you are right. So what does this mean? How big is infinity? Huh, it's huge, isn't it? It's bigger than any other number out there, isn't it? So this value is bigger than 4.32. Okay, so how do I make this go to equilibrium? I need to make this number smaller. So I need to decrease my products and increase my reactants. What does that mean if I want to decrease my products? This goes down and I want to increase my reactants. This side's going to go up. Isn't that what we showed in the BCA table? So what is my conclusion here if this quotient is bigger than my equilibrium constant? In other words, infinity is greater than 4.36, is going to shift to the left so I can make more reactants. Okay, so uh, this page here, everything, all the equilibrium concentrations were given to you. The next page is what if I don't give you all the equilibrium? Think back to what we did with the BCA table and let's see what happens. So let's turn the page. So how is this problem different? Well, if I read this, the initial concentrations and just one equilibrium concentration are known. The problems before, I knew all the equilibrium concentrations. In this scenario, I know the initial and only one equilibrium concentration. I'm going to use the same stoichiometry, the same idea as a BCA table, and I can find the other equilibrium concentrations. But this is really important. Jot this down. Instead of using a BCA table, we're going to use something called the ICE table. The BCA table, write this down. We use moles and the reaction goes to completion. The ice table is where you use molarity or pressures and it goes to equilibrium. What's the difference? We are still having the products making more reactants in the ice table. Here the reaction stops. Okay, so same idea, different terminology. Same idea BCA use moles, ice use molarity or pressure. Okay, so let's see how this works. Suppose you have a reaction mixture of A at 1 molar and B at 0. When equilibrium has been reached, A is 0.75. I don't know what B is. It says fill the table and solve for KC. Well, the first thing I can do, because it's an equilibrium, how do I know it's equilibrium? I see a double arrow. Okay, that's a huge one. Okay, if you see a double arrow, it's equilibrium. I start out at 1 because they told me that, and I start out with no B because they told me that. And then what else do I know? That we end up at 0.75. So again, we can fill this out just like we did at any other BCA table. Uh, this is going to be 0.25. So I'm going to subtract. Well, what's 0.25 divided by 1 times 2? You get 0.5. And so add them together, I get 0.5. So I just fill out the table. And now we need to solve for Kc. Well, here is my law of mass action. I'm going to plug in my values. And then I get 0.33. Now, if you think about it, remember what we talked about Q before? Well, it's 1 divided by 0. It's going to be infinity. 
um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm wrong. What's zero divided by one? There we go. It's zero. So no matter what, it will proceed to the right to uh, make some B. I'm about out of time. Watch the next video. Bye.